Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. In the last video we talked about law of dominance and today we will see what is law of segregation. So the first things first. What is segregation? Segregation is nothing but separation. And separation of what? What is segregating? Alleles. We are talking about the segregation of alleles. Now if you have seen... Uh, the video of meiosis we have talked about how the gametes are produced and every time that the gametes are produced the uh, alleles get separated right from parents when the gametes are made all the alleles get separated right because we are talking about diploid organism and gametes are haploid and it has to be in haploid condition because when these two gametes form they contribute half of the genetic material so in order to have uh, you know this combination after fusion in order to have a complete diploid cell the gametes have to be haploid that means every time the gametes have to be made it has to undergo the meiosis and have the uh, half of the chromosome that means all the alleles get separated okay so simply for this as of now remember that every time the gametes are produced the alleles get separated now how does this thing came into picture when Mendel was doing this hybridization is because he observed that both the parental trait now let's recall what we were talking about we were talking about two plants tall plant and a dwarf plant right and these were two breeding plants. that means they were homozygous so he observed that in the F2 generation, both the parental characters were there. There was no blending. It wasn't, there, there were no in-between heights. They were either tall like this first parent or dwarf like this second parents. No blending or no in-between heights. So that means what happened, you know, let's, let's look at it this way. Let's, uh, you know, go one by one. Let's take that true breeding plants capital t capital t and small t small t so uh, as per the law of segregation what must be happening when the gametes are produced from these parents these alleles are getting separated so this tall plant which is homozygous with capital t and capital t it can produce only one single kind of gamete which is having capital T because it doesn't have anything else. And in case of this dwarf plant, it is going to produce only one type of gamete and that is small t, right? Now, once these gametes were fused, you can have only one type of combination that is capital T and small t because there is no other thing. If you look at this uh, gametes from tall plant and dwarf plant in the pinnate square all we get is only one type of combination capital T and small t okay so this is what we get in F1 generation now we saw as per the law of dominance one allele is dominant over the other and in this case capital T or tall trait is dominant over the dwarf so all the plants over here in this F1 generation are tall what we did in the next step there was self uh, pollination cross between two plants of f1 generation so what will happen let's look at it over here capital t small t because this is the product of f1 generation what are the type of gametes now this heterozygous plant can produce it can produce capital t and small t why because these alleles are getting separated when the gametes are formed right and this also can have capital t and small t now any of the gamete from this parent can combine with any of the gamete from this parent right the chances it can be capital t with capital t capital t with small t small t capital t small t small t let's make it easy so from 
two heterozygous plants these are the gametes that we get so we can have either capital T capital T capital T small t or two small t that means in the F2 generation I'm going to write genotype and phenotype both what we get is genotype wise one homozygous capital T capital T two of heterozygous and one homozygous for recessive small t small t right what will be the phenotype for each of these plants now we have seen this that capital T is the dominant so here both capital T's are there so this plant is going to be tall here there is one capital and one small but capital uh, this particular allele is dominant over the dwarf so this plant is also going to be tall and this particular plant where there is no capital T only the allele for dwarf is there this is going to be dwarf plant so the ratio for phenotype of this F2 generation is going to be we have seen 3 is to 1 because there are uh, 3 tall and 1 dwarf but the genotype ratio is different let's not worry about it all you have to remember is phenotypic ratio that is 3 is to 1 3 tall and 1 dwarf this observation that both the parental heights or trait is recovered in the F2 generation and as I said it was not only the height that he experimented with uh, all different kinds of character he tried out you know one by one and it is all mono hybrid cross that means one character at a time he took and he carried out these experiments he always got this particular ratio that means the alleles are getting separated every time the gametes are made right the alleles are getting separated that's how in the f1 uh, in the f2 generation we are able to observe this kind of variation or and we are able to see both the parental traits in the f2 generation so it's simple to understand you know what this law of segregation says it says that each individual let me just write it down so the law of segregation says that each individual has two alleles right each individual possesses two alleles for every given trait and now we know this fact for every gene we have two alleles right alleles are nothing but slightly different form of the same gene that's how for height let's say for example it can be either tall or dwarf for uh, flower color it can be the purple or white so for every given trait there are two alleles for every individual okay but when the gametes are formed these alleles get segregated they will get separated and one allele will go into each gamete that's how we saw if it is uh, you know a heterozygous plant it has capital T and small t when the gametes are formed these alleles get separated and one allele will go to one gamete the other one will go in the other gamete so that's what law of segregation says law of segregation states that each individual organism possesses two alleles for each trait and these alleles segregate when gametes are formed and one allele goes into each gamete it's very interesting and it's that simple also to understand so that's all about law of segregation and in the next video we will see law of independent assortment. I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you next time. Until then keep learning.